Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Claire Thorpe I'm from University of Southern Queensland, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the QLOP Professional Development Scholarship Webinar for this afternoon. I am the Deputy Convener of QLOP's Staffing Issues Working Party, and we've been really pleased to be able to bring you these report back sessions from our scholarship winners. Uh, so we have two recipients who will be sharing their experiences with us today. Alice Luchford from JCU up in Townsville and Jill Rogers from QT in Brisbane. Just a little bit of housekeeping. If you would like to ask questions of the panellists, I'd love you to ask some questions. Please use the, the chat function in Zoom and I'll be able to relay those to our panellists. So the QLOC uh, Professional Development Scholarships have been offered twice a year since 2017 and they provide up to $1,000 to each recipient with up to $5,000 offered per round. So Alice and Jill both were awarded scholarships to attend professional development events. And Alice is going to share with us her experience at the Australian Law Librarians Association Conference in Darwin, which I believe was held in May. So I'm gonna hand over to Alice. Thanks, Claire. I'll just share my screen. Can you see that okay? Can you see my screen okay? That looks great. Thanks, Alice. Great. Oh, thanks, Claire. So, um, yeah, QLOC Post uh, Professional Development Scholarship uh, was awarded to support my attendance at the 2018 conference. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, this was my first attendance at an Australian Law Librarians Association conference. I have been a law librarian for a number of years, um, but it was the first opportunity I'd had to actually attend one. Um, the ALA conferences um, are held biannually, uh, and this particular conference was in Darwin, as Claire mentioned. They often have like a destination conference, um, somewhere out of, um, out of a, a usual. Uh, so we all enjoyed getting there. It was a bit of a challenge getting to Darwin for quite a few people, but we, all, we did all get there eventually. Um, it was wonderful to have a variety of law librarians attending ALA. Um, it was my first time, but I was really impressed to see a, a large group of academic law librarians, people from law firms, Supreme Court libraries, um, Office of Parliamentary Council libraries, and even the High Court Library. So it was a lovely group. Um, I was very grateful for the opportunity to attend, um, and a big thank you um, indeed to QLOC. Uh, for granting the uh, Professional Development Scholarship and also to my JCU Library Director and Associate Directors for supporting my attendance. Um, without them, I couldn't have actually gone. Um, overall, um, I just wanted to let everyone know that I had a fantastic experience um, and I was very impressed with the range of keynote speakers, exhibitors and network opportunities available at that conference. Um, so I, I've sort of followed the, um, the scope of how we're reporting back. So I've got a few professional takeaways and then some personal takeaways and that sort of thing to share with you today. Um, for professional takeaways, I really, really gained a much greater appreciation for Alla. Uh, so a big shout out to any of the other law librarians around um, Australia at the moment um, might be listening in, uh, or especially um, QLOC or Queensland based colleagues. Um, I got a really good feel for the general membership of ALA and the amazing inspirational colleagues and the board of, board of directors there um, because they all went above and beyond their normal jobs, you know, their normal full-time professional jobs to pull together an amazing conference in a far-off destination uh, at the other end of Australia um, with the help of a lot of local colleagues up there, of course, but it was um, my first real experience with that group and I really greatly appreciated it. Um, as a subgroup of that, there's also um, a group called ANZACL, which is the Australian and New Zealand Academic and College Law Libraries. So I got a much greater appreciation of that group as well, because we took the opportunity as university or academic librarians meeting up in Darwin to have um, a special sort of side meeting incorporated within the conference program. So that was really, really useful. And I got a huge amount of um, uh, feedback and information from those guys. Um, we were able to sort of share a lot of our 
um, issues and it's a bit of a therapy session in some ways um, to, for academic librarians. Um, uh, and for many years, I'd seen these people on email and, um, you know, different meetings, that sort of thing, but I'd never actually put their faces to the names. So that was absolutely fantastic for me to um, meet them in person. And there was a huge amount of information and ideas shared with library colleagues um, up there as well, which I can now share back with my library colleagues here at JCU and also the legal academics at JCU. Um, attending was a really professional uh, sort of positive affirmation of just my general law knowledge, I guess, um, just being a law librarian and also just the academic research support knowledge that I've built up over the last number of years. Um, it was a very positive affirmation that we're doing all the right things. Um, we were all, everybody was sharing information. Um, we're sort of all benchmarking a little bit, just knowing that we're all doing the right things for our university and our academics and students at each of our institutions. I found that very valuable and empowering. Um, it was wonderful to get a national and international perspective on law librarianship from not just within Australia, but also colleagues from New Zealand, the US and the UK. Uh, we had a number of international attendees, which was great. Um, on a more personal level, I guess, um, being my first professional law librarian conference, um, it was different to other library, librarian conferences I've attended, like VALA and those sorts of things. This was very sort of subject discipline focused, which was great. Um, it reaffirmed my passion for law librarianship all over again. It's, you know, why we come to work every day um, doing what we're doing. Um, and just the amazing, uh, I guess, effect that we can have on our students and academic staff. Uh, it was my first visit to Darwin. So I absolutely loved Darwin. Uh, I can't wait to go back again and take my family with me. Um, so we were only there for a few days and it, it was just a really tempting taster as a lovely destination. Uh, and it's not that much different to North Queensland, so it didn't, the heat didn't worry me and uh, all those sorts of things. A, a lot of the others had flown up from down south and they were absolutely loving it. Um, it was very similar to me um, and I'd, I'd very happily go back and spend a week there. I got a much greater understanding of Charles Darwin University uh, and also the Northern Territory Parliament and Supreme Court operation and history up there in Darwin. Um, we were able to go through a series of hosted tours, which were fantastic and gave a really, really um, in-depth look at um, behind the scenes at Parliament House and the Supreme Court Library, as well as attending some of the, or going into some of the Supreme Courts and having a look through, uh, hearing about the history and the amazing art collection they've got up there. Um, Personally, I really enjoyed just that incidental sort of exposure to new ideas, new software, blogs, networks, um, legal scholarship, uh, websites, that sort of thing. Um, you know, I already thought I was fairly on top of everything, but it was wonderful to still learn new things every day and just be exposed to amazing um, people and ideas and what they're doing. Um, so I've added to my um, repertoire, I guess, in that way. Um, gone and followed heaps more people and heaps more blogs and things. I did use Twitter a lot at the conference um, to facilitate a lot of the networking and information sharing. Um, I was already a Twitter devotee, so I was pre-following people and absolutely, um, you know, fairly um, familiar with a lot of the guest speakers and, and um, keynotes and that sort of thing. But I found it was beyond my expectations and my Twitter use was just incredibly valuable and enjoyable at the, at the conference. Uh, there was a core cool group of us, there weren't that many of us, but um, we really um, were you know, really networking, sharing, uh, making the most of it as a, a platform to share information and facilitate things. Uh, and I'll stay friends and follow a lot of those people for a, many, many years to come. Uh, so that some of those were my personal takeaways. I, I probably could have said a lot more there, but they were the main things that I remembered and reflected on. Um, looking at how I can apply a lot of what I learned in my work here at JSU, um, my normal day-to-day -day role is as the liaison librarian and I support law and a variety of other discipline areas. Um, so I do a lot of academic research support and also learning and teaching in higher education. So 
With regard to the academic research side of things, um, I, I really enjoyed talking to the ANZACAL colleagues um, a lot about the legal citation metrics, legal research impact and engagement, CALLED, which is our Council of Australian Law Deans. Um, they have had a journal ranking or journal impact ranking system in the past and sort of became untrendy, but now they're looking at doing again. And so I was able to talk to a lot of those other colleagues about that side of our jobs, because law is hard to, um, uh, to get a lot of these citation metrics and that sort of thing. And we help a lot of our legal academics with academic promotion. So I'm always on the lookout for new ideas and ways of showing impact and engagement. So I picked up quite a lot of good ideas that I'll follow up on for those guys. And I also do a lot of day-to-day -day learning and teaching, so legal research skills. Um, you know, I'm very embedded in the um, first year program here. Uh, so I've got some great ideas about legal design labs, legislative literacy, statutory interpretation, visualisation in law, gamification in law, those sorts of things that sort of I've been interested in myself anyway, and I've got some great ideas that I can follow up on, and I've already started telling the academic staff about a lot of those. Um, applications for my library. So it was an excellent opportunity to network with other law librarians from around Australia, especially as I mentioned earlier, the ANSICAL community. It's very collegial, very sharing group, uh, amazing, inspiring colleagues running that. Um, and I can't wait to be more involved with that now that I can sort of picture everybody and uh, can't wait to go to more um, events in the future with those guys. Uh, many new ideas from Australia, New Zealand, US and UK to share with the library colleagues here and our legal academics, as I mentioned. Uh, we'll be really able to um, take on board a lot of the ideas and really implement them, in, especially in the first year program. Uh, and yeah, and this one, this dot point carries on from that, further embedding the role of, of myself as a law librarian in the law school here um, for academic research support, impact engagement, those sorts of things, and also the teaching and learning side of things and assessment. Um, since I came back from the Law Librarians Conference, uh, we've had a law retreat, so a two-day sort of um, planning strategic retreat, and I was able to present at that and share lots of great ideas about research and teaching and learning, and I really enjoyed doing that. Um, so, We'll be, yeah, hopefully able to follow a lot of those ideas up. Um, to the, the bigger perspective of the application for QLOG, um, well, I found it was an amazing opportunity to meet and network with colleagues um, from, from the local hosting institution, which is Charles Darwin. Um, so a big shout out to any Charles Darwin people listening in today. Um, um, it, they did an amazing job of helping to facilitate the conference. And even though it wasn't on site at Charles Darwin, it was actually in Darwin, uh, the township itself. Um, it was still wonderful for that perspective. And one of my previous um, associate directors, Kate Elder, she's now the director up there at Charles Darwin. So I was able to go and visit uh, Kate and have a look around the library and and get to meet a lot of the other librarians there, which was fantastic. Uh, I was able to share knowledge and get to know a lot of the other QLOC law librarians at the actual conference. So once again, shout out to Rachel, if you're listening in from Charles Darwin, and um, Kayleen from Southern Cross, uh, Ian from Bond, and Karen from University of Sunshine Coast, if you're listening in today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. <laughs> um, and just going through the whole QLOC um, PD scholarship process. I felt it was very positive. There was a lot of goodwill and awareness of QLOC in just through going through this process of applying and being awarded the scholarship and now reporting back. So I've been able to share that with my other colleagues here and even at the, at the event itself. I was able to say that I was attending due to the help of a, um, a QLOC um, scholarship and you know I was very grateful for that. Um, I thought I'd show a couple of quick photos of my time in Darwin, just to help set the scene. Uh, so these are a couple of photos of the Northern Territory Parliament House. Uh, the amazing tropical architecture up there was inspiring and really just fantastic. Um, 
we had the hosted two or three Parliament House, as I said, and got to see behind the scenes and see um, the actual, it's a unicameral chamber, if anyone's listening there with law background. <laughs> that was interesting. They, the Parliament was sitting at the time, so we were able to go into the gallery and, and have a quick look. Um, they were actually having lunch, so we didn't actually get to see anybody, but we had a look, um, looked through the library. Um, there was amazing history because the location of Parliament House was a, um, a site that was um, tragically bombed in the Darwin bombing in World War II. Uh, there's actually a plaque on the floor in the foyer where the, um, I think it was the Telegraph staff that actually died there trying to man their station. At the time it was a lot of females actually manning the station trying to communicate out um, as, as to what was happening. So there's a lot of history there. Um, then we went on to the Northern Territory Supreme Court and we had a tour through and through the library and the Supreme Courts. And then we were very spontaneously asked to participate in a mock trial. So we actually um, all took over courtroom number six. And um, if you can see the photo on the left, that's me being sworn in um, as a as an, uh, witness uh, in a mock trial. Um, and then later, oh, the other photo is of the jury returning their verdict. Um, it was a really, it was fun activity. Um, facilitated by one of the, the court staff there and it was really great because we were all we help students with law questions and you know um, finding law cases every day it was great to actually participate in a trial mock trial so then this these couple of photos from Charles Darwin University Library I had a, a lovely visit there thanks again to Kate Elder and Rachel Plesh uh, they gave me a very personal tour I absolutely loved it I was so impressed with their library uh, amazing natural light and open group study spaces. They've done a great job um, just creating a really great vibe and great space and really um, engaging uh, design up there. And it's an, an amazing location right next to the ocean. If anyone gets a chance to visit, uh, it was, yeah, it's a lovely campus. And then I just thought I'd finish on this one. We had the um, actual conference dinner at a pretty crazy venue. It was um, the Crocosaurus Cove. It's like a, a kind of top end adventure um, or wildlife adventure. So you go in and you hold baby crocodiles and you, I think I didn't actually hold a baby crocodile. I, um, I didn't brave that one, but I was holding a, a some sort of a lizard, I think it was. Uh, they just sort of had people roaming around the, the conference dinner, um, just handing you some sort of creature and asking you to you know, hold it. Um, and then all the while there were all these amazing crocodiles swimming around beside you and it, exactly where we we're sitting there was a huge window and every now and then a huge crocodile much bigger than this one that I've got here much bigger older one would just sort of sidle up to the window and give us all a fright um, even yeah right in the middle of our dinner and presentations and everything so it was it was um, a very very different venue and it was great fun everyone had a ball and um, yeah, overall I had a wonderful experience. So I hope that um, sums it up for you a little bit. I am so grateful to the, for the opportunity, for the scholarship and to my colleagues here, they're my director and associate directors for helping me attend. And any questions? Or did you want to have questions now, Claire, or after Jill? Well, we might listen to Jill and then um, see if there are any questions. So we've got about, I'll just let you know, Alice, we've got about 20 people on the line. So thank you very much for sharing that. You have maybe want to go to Darwin um, and you've made me a little bit envious of the law librarians as well because it looks like you had an absolutely wonderful time. But thank you so much, Alice. So we'll, we'll move on to Jill Rogers. So Jill is Repository Resource Librarian at QT. Sorry, my Zoom just went over there and now it doesn't look like I'm looking at the camera, so I'll come back to you. <laughs> So Jill um, used her scholarship to attend the Digital Library Federation Forum and Digital Preservation Conference in Pittsburgh, the United States of America. So probably just as difficult to get to as Darwin, I suspect. I'll hand over to Jill to explain how she got from Brisbane to Pittsburgh. Thanks, Jill. Well, thank you, Claire. And um, that was very good. Thank you, Alice, too. Now, um, my period was such a long time ago. Yesterday when I was revisiting, I was thinking, oh, that's so good. I want to go back this year. And it's in uh, Las Vegas this year, but uh, that might be a bit hard to pick. Uh, now, I just, 
like Alice, wanted to say thanks very much to everyone involved in the QLOC scholarship program. And I wanted to thank QUT past and present colleagues and a special thanks to my supervisor, Colleen Cleary and the library resource services team. And also to colleagues in the wider library community, both in Australia and in the US. So today's overview for me is the QLOC professional development scholarship I received so that I could attend two conferences in Pittsburgh the Digital Library Forum from the 23rd to the 25th of October, where I presented a short talk, and the Digital Preservation Session from the 25th to the 26th of October last year. There were 600 delegates over four days, consisting mostly of US colleagues and some Canadians. It was odd for me to be the only Australian. I was already in the United States as I was selected by QUT Library for the Professional Library Staff Exchange Program with the University of Colorado in Denver, the Auraria Library. The exchange component of my time away was three weeks in total. And my WordPress blog is on this site when you guys can get to see it. So the exchange and conference highlights were um, and where to from here will be what I'll talk about a bit more. So the Digital Library Forum, as I mentioned, was, is run by the Digital Library Federation. And their aim is to bring together digital library, archives, museum practitioners, to set ambitious agendas, share new methods and experiments, develop best practice in digital collections and preservation, and connect the digital collections uh, a community. All these topics are relevant to QUT and sharing with the QLOC digitization practitioner group that I'm the convener. So it has been really hard for me to tell you guys um, from the four days just how valuable this was and to digest it for you into 10 minutes. On the screen that I'm going to share with you when I can, you'll be able to see the sessions that I attended. And my six minute talk uh, meant that instead of 750 US dollars, the registration was 450 US dollars. So that was very good. But I did have a little freak out when I followed NASA. Uh, the Digital Library Federation Forum presentations have, a, have been uploaded and they can be accessed on the site that I have put on the screen. And my presentation can be accessed also and, this, and the um, address is there. I've got some photos which I'm sorry because of the technology you guys can't see and that's in the presentation. There were huge numbers of vendors and sponsors. I was really amazed by the equipment and the size of the sponsorship that they had. There were um, so many that I did admit to being a bit jealous of the equipment. Uh, the main auditorium where they had the keynote talks, breakfast, lunches, was a very busy place and people were busy typing away and twittering and doing all sorts of things. This, the concurrent sessions were held in smaller rooms and these rooms held around about 80 to 100 people. So the talk that I gave, there were about 100 at that time. And there was lots of opportunities, like Alice mentioned in her sessions, to network and all an amazing different sorts of food. I became aware of a Polish dish that was very nice because Pittsburgh had a lot of miners, so there was a lot of Polish background. On the uh, midday of the 25th to the 26th of October uh, at the convention centre where we were, there was the digital preservation sessions. This had a more archive feel and the uh, theme of last year's session was Preservation is political. So there's a lot of information again on my slide that if anyone's interested, you can go and look at the digital preservation presentations 
and you can access those that have been uploaded. So it was um, very tiring. We went from um, breakfast sessions through to dinner sessions and lunch sessions and all the time talking. So it was good, but very um, full on. So the key professional takeaways that I found were that the similarities were that we all have experienced, committed, enthusiastic and passionate staff. And academic and other libraries are all trying to digitise older materials and born digital materials and keep some sort of order. Uh, the importance of digital preservation is sometimes difficult to justify and promote given the cost of labour and funding in most libraries. The differences that I could identify between QUT mostly and, and the US perspective was we have a lot more permanent contracts and we have very little external grant funding. We have a very strict adherence to copyright. Uh, in the universities, they look to fair use for educational purposes. So we go to a lot of trouble to put things away that for copyright reasons, they don't worry. They let the big unis take that. Uh, QUT Library doesn't have an internal IT person, map specialist, marketing or comms or graphic designer. Uh, QUT has a lot more space for students to sit and meet and this was more about my exchange, but it was still relevant in talking to other library people. Uh, and in Australia, we're, we're not as well funded or advanced regarding staffing and equipment for digitisation activities on the whole. Some unis are moving in that direction and of course some public libraries as well. So my key personal takeaways were that I, uh, it, it was a unique opportunity for me to share information and ask questions. I really appreciated everyone's generosity in sharing time, skills and listening. I got very experienced with Uber, WordPress and giving presentations. I found it easier to give presentations to strangers than people I knew. It, there was a lot of fun and social inclusion and learning about American things that I hadn't realised. Everybody was friendly and uh, I certainly didn't mention any political uh, connotations. I, I found I could cope with a lot of flights, uh, the crazy security in America, but being myself, I missed my family, friends and community more than I thought. The applications in my work is I, I learnt so much from the time away the whole month. And I met so many people whom I can contact in the future. Both conferences in Pittsburgh were huge and I have a lot of thinking and sharing still to do as yesterday I found things that I hadn't really taken in and I can go back to. And I hope those of you interested in digitisation can do that. Uh, the other thing that I found a reinforcement, as did Alice mention, of the QUT digital collections that the original material that is solely related to QUT, either as cultural heritage, it is a valuable worldwide resource of teaching and learning and cultural heritage items. Applications in my library here is that I thought employing staff with backgrounds that are diverse but complementary to the traditional library skill set can bring great outcomes for both library staff and the broader university community. We need always to find out we are not just doing things because we always have, or if there is still a valid reason. And we need to always continue to identify opportunities that build a participatory and an innovative culture in the workplace that encourages exploration of new ideas. And I found that the whole time away I was challenged by thinking of new things. So the applications for QLOC could be that the funding of scholarship provides valuable opportunities for library staff to extend themselves via continued professional development. 
I'm interested in exploring uh, the Library Juice Academy courses that are available from the states and they may provide structured training for people within QLOC groups. Inviting and allowing others from outside QLOC groups can lead to great collaboration and exchange. And we've found that with our QLOC digitisation group with members that are not just universities or Queensland people. And finally there, we need to be open to share more when we've learnt something. And this is much more easily done when we know someone's background or work either from an online or face-to-face -face sharing of ideas. So, oh, I'm nearly there. Um, the affirmations I found the exchange program was, and this included the uh, conferences, a great professional development experience. Ex and combined with the conference, it was very worthwhile. Uh, we thought, I also thought that here at QUT, we offer fantastic services and resources for our students and staff in the library. And even though resourcing in my area for QUT, QUT Digital Collections is sometimes piecemeal, we are offering a service that can enhance learning and teaching and share and engage with alumni, real primary source material and cultural heritage with the world. The involvement in QLOC groups can provide good opportunities to share with colleagues and is always worth going. And my applications or ideas is possibly to do more staff exchanges closer to home, State Library, Griffith, UQ, public libraries, more professional development in online courses. At QUT, we have Off the Grid uh, program, which fosters innovation and sharing. Promotion of the QUT digital collection needs to be more structures, structured to make the effort worth it. And we need a preservation strategy for all the university. So that's it, thank you. We can now open up to questions. If you have a question, I'll just get you to type it in using the chat function of Zoom, which you should find at the bottom of your screen. And while we wait to see if there's any questions from our attendees today, I would like to ask both of you, Alice and Jill, do you have any tips for someone who might be thinking of applying for the next round of QLOC scholarships? Alice, would you like to go first? Oh, I think um, it's definitely worthwhile. Um, think ahead to something that will be of use to you um, personally, uh, something that your library might really want to support you doing, but they might not have had quite the budget for that particular idea. Um, so for instance, um, I guess my uh, professional development scholarship was only a part of what it actually costs to go. So sort of think big, uh, think bigger than what you, your budget might be. This could be the seed money or just the, the starting money to then get your, your library director on board to um, support the rest of the, the cost, I guess. Um, yeah, Jill? Um, I yeah, I, I think definitely have a go for the QLOC scholarship because it, it lends some credibility to what you want to do if you are successful or even makes people aware that you want to try for different opportunities. Because as we all know, the professional development budgets are always shrinking. And uh, mine was just part of what I did, of course, and QT was very generous in sending me to the whole month. But yeah, definitely worth doing and and not an onerous over the top process. And it gives you a lot of confidence to try for things again. So um, I've put in for one in, in a conference next year. And I think if I hadn't done the thing in Pittsburgh, I would be more reticent to do it. But that'd probably be my summation. That's great. And Alice, I mean, you're from a, a regional university. You obviously have I guess the challenges of, of distance as well. Would you have been able to go to the Law Librarians Conference if you hadn't got the scholarship? No, I, I wouldn't have. Um, there was always the desire to send me um, and other colleagues have gone in the past over the last you know, 10 years or so, um, but budgets as they are, I don't think I would have been able to go this year without that um, extra seed money that helps supplement the cost for us for this time. 
So, if, you know, even though I'm in the top end of Australia, it was still a real challenge to get there. Um, it took me eight to nine hours of transit each way. Um, even, yeah, like you think it's just a hop across, but um, there's very few direct flights. So I had to sort of go either by Cairns one way and by Brisbane the other way, which seemed um, crazy, but that's just how it happened. So getting there was a challenge, but it was well worth it. Um, and just, I think, as Jill was saying, just to validate the attendance at something, um, I was fortunate to be able to go um, and not present at this particular one, but as Jill sort of intimated, like it does give you the confidence to then um, try again and to submit another application for something else or to submit a paper perhaps next time. Um, so even being in regional areas, it's, I guess if, if you are able to then be a speaker at a, a conference, that might help get you there. Um, but I was fortunate this time to be able to go and attend and enjoy as a participant rather than a speaker. Um, but it, I think it gives me confidence to apply for further scholarships and further conferences in the future. Thanks, Alice. I think what I've really taken away uh, from both of your reports back is the, the positive affirmation that attending these events really affirmed the work that you're already doing. And I think it's, it's something we can certainly be proud of in, in Queensland and Australia about the fact that we are already quite innovative and world leaders in some of the things we're doing in our libraries. And it's great to hear um, the stories that you've shared that just affirm that you're on the right track and that you're, you're keeping up with the trends and technologies as they go ahead. Jill, as the only Australian yes. at an international conference, I'm interested in um, what you think the benefit is of attending an international conference where you're completely, I, I guess, in a, in a very different cultural environment. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm certainly not used to being in a minority in that way, but uh, yeah, I think, it was good. People were surprised that I'd come from Australia. Um, Pittsburgh being, you know, where it is in America isn't also that easy to get to. Uh, but yeah, the learning was really good both ways. But I do think we're quite a lot behind in the digitisation space because we just don't get the grant money or the philanthropy money that flows through to the universities particularly or and it, the public libraries in America. They're right on to it and they've been doing it for 15 or 20 years. And we're worrying about the National Archives losing uh, their film and sound things because just deterioration over time. So I think we need to be more smart about saying to uh, alumni and philanthropists, hey, the library's here and we can do amazing things, just um, give us a chance. We've got a couple of comments, not questions, so a couple of comments from the chat. Uh, Sandra Fry wrote, thanks for your presentations, they were great. And Bernadette Loyal wrote, I agree, Alice, and working in a remote library does have a number of challenges including those of professional development. Initiatives like the QLOX scholarship really make a difference, so thank you. So we don't have any other questions, so we might wrap it up, but I would like to thank a few people before we do. Firstly, thank you to both Alice and Jill for taking time to share their experiences with us. I'd also like to thank our university librarians who do uh, fund the QLOC Professional Development Scholarships. Um, so if you are talking to your university librarian and uh, it's something you think you might be interested in the future, you might encourage them to continue to support this initiative. And a particular thank you to Rachel Harrison today, QLOC Executive Officer Extraordinaire, who has set up and facilitated today's session. Thank you all for coming along uh, to the webinar. Apologies for the technical challenges, but we will publish both the recording and the slides on the QLOC website shortly, and Rachel will post to the QLOC Announce e-list when that's available. Thank you, everyone, and again, thank you very much to our panellists. Thanks, Claire. Thanks, Jill. Thank Bye-bye. Rachel, bye. Bye.